Hi, I'm Jackie Stapleton and welcome to Atoll TV. Today I'm here to help you with understanding the requirements of ISO 14001. If you like this video and want to see more great content, then click the subscribe button and the bell icon. It costs nothing to subscribe and you can unsubscribe at any time. In this video, I'm going to cover clause 5.2, environmental policy, which of course is all about the environmental policy. I'm going to break this clause down and turn it into something you can all understand. You'll then be able to apply this to your own organization system and understand what the requirements will look like for you. No more guessing. So keep on watching as I can show you just how easy this is. Okay, let's get started. You will note that this clause is in clause five, leadership. So it's not something that is buried in the system. This means that top management is responsible. So I'd better remind you who top management is then. The official definition for top management is the person or group of people who directs and controls an organization at the highest level. I always say that top management are the decision makers. Depending on the structure and size of the business, top management could be the owners, shareholders, board of directors, general manager, or even a project manager if the scope of the system is down to a project level only. As mentioned previously, it is top management who are responsible for establishing, implementing, and maintaining the environmental policy. I always say that a policy is the high level intent and commitment of the business. A policy isn't supposed to tell you what to do. It's created to set the standard of what the business is committed to achieving. The areas to be considered when establishing, implementing, and maintaining the environmental policy are A, is appropriate to the purpose and context of the organization, including the nature, scale, and environmental impacts of its activities, products, and services. We determine the context of the organization in an earlier clause, clause 4.1, understanding the organization and its context. Be sure to check the video out for this on Atoll TV if you need a refresher. This will help you to then align your environmental policy with the context of the organization. This section does also require the policy to be appropriate to the nature, scale, and environmental impacts of its activities, products, and services. So this means that you can't just download a template or someone else's environmental policy as they will not be appropriate or relevant to your business activities. I always review the environmental policy to see how well it aligns to the environmental aspects and impacts identified, as well as the objectives set. Speaking of objectives, the next section, section B states that the policy provides a framework for setting environmental objectives. This is always a confusing one for most people. The requirement doesn't mean that you have to list your objectives within the policy. All they are asking is for there to be a commitment or statement in the policy that demonstrates or documents the commitment for setting objectives. It could be as simple as stating, we are committed to setting environmental objectives that support our commitment to the protection of the environment including prevention of pollution and are appropriate to the nature, scale and environmental impacts of our activities, products and services. The objectives are established, communicated, measured and reviewed at least annually or when changes to the business and system occur. Something like that. You can see that this just simply explains the very high level intention for the objective framework within the business. Okay, moving along to point C now, where it states that the policy is to include a commitment to the protection of the environment, 
including prevention of pollution and other specific commitments relevant to the context of the organization. Do these words sound familiar? Yep, I just used them in my previous example of how to include the framework for setting environmental objectives. I work smart and not hard and also included this requirement for section C. I'll repeat this again. So the example statement was, listen up, we are committed to setting environmental objectives that support our commitment to the protection of the environment, including prevention of pollution and appropriate to the nature, scale and environmental impacts of our activities, products and services. The objectives are established, communicated, measured and reviewed at least annually or when changes to the business and system occur. See how just that one statement and a couple of sentences pulls in multiple requirements of this policy clause. We then move on to section D where it states that the policy is to include a commitment to fulfill its compliance obligations. Further along in ISO 14001, there is actually clause 613, compliance obligations. And then there is clause 912, evaluation of compliance. Both of these clauses work together to identify what compliance obligations are relevant and determine how they apply in the environmental management system and then check whether they are being followed. Oh, and you probably would have also identified which needs and expectations of interested parties are or could become compliance obligations way back in clause 4.2. Be sure to check out that video on Atoll TV if you need a refresher. Now, moving along though, amongst these other clauses in the standard, whatever compliance obligations you identify and then action and check is more on the operational or doing side. All the environmental policy wants is a commitment to fulfill what you identify. It can be as simple a statement as, we are committed to fulfilling all compliance obligations identified as relevant to our activities, products and services. And then finally, point E states that the policy is to include a commitment to continual improvement of the environmental management system to enhance environmental performance. Yep, yet another commitment is required. And honestly, it can be as simple as making that statement in your policy. We are committed to continual improvement of our environmental management system. You could even combine this statement with the earlier one I shared for the framework of your objectives combining several commitment requirements from this clause all together. So it could go something like this. We are committed to continual improvement of our environmental management system through setting environmental objectives that support our commitment to the protection of the environment, including prevention of pollution. Our objectives are appropriate to the nature, scale and environmental impacts of our activities, products and services. The objectives are established, communicated, measured and reviewed at least annually or when changes to the business and system occur. Of course, it's all well and good making all of these commitment statements what you have to remember is that if you make the commitment, then you have to back it up in your system. This isn't about a warm and fuzzy policy being created and then forgetting about how you are going to demonstrate your commitment. Be very aware that ISO 14001 will throw more clauses at you where it will require you to figure out how you will meet these commitments. This is the brilliant thing about the standard. Every clause supports each other. Now that you understand what is included in the policy, let's look at how it is to be communicated and made available. The first point states that the policy is to be maintained as documented information. Easy, 
write your environmental policy up. It needs to be documented. We need to see it. It can't just be in your head. Normally an environmental policy is just one page. Remember, it's a high level intent and commitment. So there's not a lot of detail or how to do things in the document. That's why it is normally just one page. Now, the next point states that the policy is to be communicated within the organization. This is further backed up by clause 7.3 awareness and 7.4 communication further on in the standard. So be sure to check those out too. So once again, this policy isn't just documented to look pretty and create all this warm and fuzzy feelings for you. It is required to be communicated. How is up to you. The standard is not specific on this. Normally, a policy is communicated within the organization by being displayed at reception, on a notice board, and as a part of staff induction and training. Next up, it states that the policy is also to be available to interested parties. These interested parties are what you would have identified as part of clause 4.2, understanding the needs and expectations of interested parties. If you need a reminder of the requirements of clause 4.2, be sure to check the video out on Atoll TV. We have already touched on this in the previous point when communicating within the organization. However, if making the policy available to external interested parties, this could be managed through having the policy available on your company website or including it in tenders. It is up to the organization to determine the best method to make the policy available to interested parties based on what communication channels you already currently use with them. Well, I think I've talked this one through. I know there's a lot to take in and thanks for sticking with me till the end. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Please don't forget that Auditor Training Online is a recognized training provider and we know how it works in the real world. So we are confident that we can help you to make a change in your life and join the most sought after profession out there. Go to our website and enroll in our training to transform your work and industry experience into a recognized qualification and career. And also, please subscribe to Atoll TV and leave a comment or question as I truly do want to help you to join the best career out there with me.